Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the AI Frontier series, a global collaboration between Reuters Plus and KPMG. I'm your host, Nadira Tudor, and today we'll be delving into the impact of AI on the industrial manufacturing sector. Manufacturers worldwide face a complex web of challenges when it comes to AI adoption, from cost and scalability to the abundance of legacy systems. But this technology also comes with incredible opportunities for optimizing supply chains, enhancing operational efficiency and driving sustainability. To discuss these challenges and opportunities at such a pivotal time for the sector, I'm delighted to be joined by industry leaders from KPMG and Schneider Electric and SAP. To start, I'd like to welcome S. Satish, partner and national sector leader for industrial manufacturing at KPMG in India. Hello, Satish. Hi, hi, Nadira. Delighted to be here to talk about a very important topic and a relevant topic for industrial manufacturing sector on how AI is transforming manufacturing. It certainly is. Manufacturing is undergoing a significant transformation with AI and the potential for adoption is huge and it can be applied across supply chain. Can you give me some examples of where manufacturers are adopting this new tech? AI's power can be leveraged across all functions in the manufacturing sector. To give you a few, maybe in procurement, AI is actually used in intelligent commodity forecasting by tracking multiple indices on a real-time basis. AI is also used as uh, intelligent supplier negotiation assistance by understanding the supplier performance over past events and also based on the category, it helps as a decision-making system. AI can actually help in terms of production to reduce equipment failures from sensor data. AI can also help in terms of enhancing quality by tracking process parameters on a real-time basis, as well as adjusting mission parameters to deliver consistent yield, reduce cost, as well as enhance sustainability. AI can also act as a planner, central planner, looking at demand and supply side and dynamically doing production schedules as well as inventory control, and in the process helping in terms of customer delivery compliance. So these are a few examples, Nadira, of AI's power for industrial manufacturing sector. Thank you, Satish. Really very interesting. But despite those clear benefits, it seems progress is slower than it could be. What are some of the impediments you see? I would actually like to classify the impediments into three broad buckets. One is the data, data impediment or the data disconnect, the way I would uh, call it. One is typically manufacturing companies have got data lying in different functions which are siloed. For example, R&D collects a lot of data on product design. Production collects data on shop floor, minute by minute. And if you look at field data, they collect a lot of data on warranty as well as customer feedback. This data, when it's not integrated, doesn't yield itself for AI to unleash its full power at an enterprise. Second is, this data also lies in different legacy systems and old infrastructure. And hence, it also doesn't facilitate AI to be leveraged fully. That's not the data challenge part of it. Second, if you look at from a people perspective, workforce, has got a concern that AI may replace the job. So there's a good amount of communication which is actually required to ensure that how AI can help in terms of productivity. So there can also be some amount of resistance, especially when human machine interfaces happen. That's one as a challenge. Second is while the leadership is clear on an enterprise-wide AI strategy roadmap, maybe many times middle management is not with them, they're not aligned. Hence, change management is very crucial, you know, which is also acting as an impediment in AI implementation. Third biggest area of theme is on the trust as well as explainability of AI. Many organizations may not completely post to trust in terms of on the AI, which also delays an implementation of AI. Thank you, Satish, for those valuable insights on AI's transformation of manufacturing. Thank you, thank you, Nadra. Now, I'm delighted to welcome Schneider Electric, Stefan Pia, Senior Vice President of Supply Chain Strategy and Performance, who joins us from Paris, France. Hello, Stefan. Thanks for joining us. It's great to hear how AI is impacting a Fortune Global 500 company. 
Nice to be with you today. I mean, uh, for sure, I mean, AI is is uh, fully uh, embedded into our process. We are an innovative company uh, and, and we are early adopters of this kind of technology. So we, we use AI from planning to shop floor execution, from shop floor executions to machines. So, so in each of these nodes, we have AI engine embedded. So when we look at planning, it's really about forecast accuracy. It's about inventory optimization. And now we are heading towards autonomous touchless planning, meaning to say that we load the system with data and let the AI engine do the rest of the job while monitoring. When we look at shop floor, it's really about equipping our supervisors with AI agents that, that help them on, on, on troubleshooting, help them to, to, to optimize the utilization of machines and workforce. And finally, on the machines, we are in the OT world powered by, by Aveva technology. We are really uh, looking at optimizing the process, a welding process, a control machines. And it's really about scaling. And here we have developed an AI engine that enable with a local no-code platform to scale up solutions with a repository of written AI models. So, so you see AI is utilized end to end from planning to executions and machines. As we know, Stefan, at Schneider Electric, there's an industrial footprint across multiple sectors. How do you balance technological innovation and implementation with operational continuity? Well, of course, obviously, AI brings efficiency, but it's also bringing its own set of risk, uh, which we need to, to, to manage. So, so I'm going to mention uh, uh, three of them. So the first one is really uh, cybersecurity. So AI, there is no smart process with our enhanced cybersecurity process. We have a network of cyber site leaders powered by technology like Clarity or Power Alto that monitor the, the, the breaches and act on it. We measure the cyber health of each of our sites. So mess stepping up on cyber is, is a number one risk prevention approach. Second is data. As we give more power to the AI module, we need to secure the integrity of the data, the access of the data, the quality of the data. We created a new governance model, a new data functions that monitors, define industrialized data uh, cleansing and data uh, control. Last but not least, the, la the, 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 the machines, the, the plants cannot stop when network is down and you need to have a layered architecture, here again powered by Aveva technology that enables data storage on the edge, in the premise, on the cloud and secure machines run whatever condition. So this is really a combination. Of course, resilience is a wider topic. It's really also about having a regional balance, a power of two between critical uh, uh, supplies end to end, and really about site prevention. So it's a complete uh, setup with AI at uh, 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 in the orchestration layer, layer that makes sure that we balance uh, and we take right decision de depending on events, on the geopolitics, and or, or whatever. Okay, so so this is really a complete topic. And it's really important to look at all aspects, isn't it, to, in order to go forward. Now, your eco-structure platform seems to be central to the company's AI strategy. How is this tech helping your customers achieve efficiencies and sustainability? There are many examples. Uh, I'm going to pick a few of them. So eco-structure is designed uh, for, for, for efficiency and sustainability. So, so, and, and, it, and it cannot work without AI insight. So the uh, first example is HVAC, which represents 40% of the consumption of, of, of an average building. Uh, we are providing AI engine that monitors uh, the parameters with the temperature, lights, uh, uh, humidity, etc., and, and optimize uh, the, the utilization of the HVAC. We, we reduce up to 15% of the energy consumption uh, uh, related to HVAC. Second example is microgrid optimizers. We have a, a, a more and more complex network with the uh, power source coming from the wind, from solar, from the from battery, from EV chargers, or from the grid. And the AI, uh, the microgrid optimizers, secures that we balance better demand and supply, avoid given peaks, and optimize infrastructure and energy consumption a, a, as a consequence. So it's really the two striking examples that come to my mind coming from ecostructure uh, technology. Thank you, Stefan, for those valuable insights. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Mark Oliver Klein, Vice President, Partner Product Management, SAP Business AI, who joins us from Waldorf in Germany. Hello, Mark Oliver. Good morning, Nadira from uh, sunny Waldorf, Germany. 
How is SAP helping bridge the gap between employing AI in isolation and enterprise-wide rollouts? That's a great question, Nadira, right? SAP's heritage is the business process itself and the business of a process running across LOB areas, running across functions at uh, corporations. So inherently, we are. Uh, our desire is to make sure that the business processes we anyway empower are now augmented by AI. And if you look, um, initially, companies explore, they look at individual areas, they try POCs, but if they want to go into production, they have to make sure it's going to be part of their uh, business suite system, it's going to be part of their ERP, it's going to be part of their uh, um, process landscape, right? And this is where, where we come in, where we bring embedded AI capabilities that make sure the processes are augmented, improved, and uh, running smoothly with SAP Business AI. And in addition, give tools on top of that, like Jewel being the UI for AI that then help um, employees deal with the new reality of having a digital companion, basically. We often hear of AI being deployed in silos. How does your organization's technology help connect these disparate areas of a manufacturing business? Having an end-to-end -end view of all business processes is key here and uh, making sure that there is an end vision of what um, you need to or you want to achieve as a corporation by applying AI. And it's not only an IT a challenge you have to tackle, it's also a business process challenge. And with our uh, tool chain, like with the Signavi on Leon AX, you really can get this end-to-end -end view. And then you need to look at the areas where you can leverage then, for example, our embedded AI capabilities and finance to start with our accrual agentic system, right? So there's, these are the uh, things where you can easily start and make sure you get value by not losing the big picture of what is uh, really important for you and uh, getting all the value out of your investment in AI. And looking ahead, with agentic AI and self-optimizing supply chains, what developments should we expect to see in the next phase of AI in manufacturing? Ideally, we avoid situations that we had uh, one, two years back where a ship being stuck in the Suez Canal uh, kind of uh, brings the whole world to a, a stop because the supply chain simply uh, didn't move anymore, right? So if you now look at uh, really uh, uh, employing a system of agents and look at the entire business processes, um, you're now, for example, maybe able to reroute the sourcing of your goods to a different place, right? So your supply chain agent already optimized uh, the sourcing from a different place, but that should then, of course, trigger your HR agents to look at the staffing in that uh, additional location. So you might need to hire more people in that location or get uh, third party contractors in. Right. This is where then it's going to be the handover uh, to the HR agent. And then, of course, uh, uh, bringing that all together, maybe with your finance agent, making sure um, that uh, it's going to be uh, the cash flow is still going to be positive with all these disruptions is, is, is key. And this could finally maybe bring this idea of the self-healing supply chain to life, powered by AI. Thank you, Mark Oliver, for illuminating SAP's role in manufacturing's AI transformation. Thank you, Nadira. Finally, I'd like to turn to Italy, where we're joined by Carmelo Mariano, partner and head of industrial manufacturing at KPMG. Hello, Carmelo. Hello, Nadira. As we heard from Satish earlier, manufacturers are at various stages in their AI journey. One of the key transformation challenges highlighted by the KPMG Intelligent Manufacturing Report is data integration. How can companies really maximize AI's potential? To really get the most out of AI, companies must uh, uh, adopt an uh, AI-driven operating model, one that is powered by data and built on a modular and scalable technology architecture. AI-driven companies uh, prioritize uh, the collection, analysis and interpretation of data to, uh, to make better informed decisions. 
they also uh, foster a culture that uh, encourages the use of insight uh, to support uh, both strategic and uh, tactic uh, and tactic action data becomes uh, a crucial asset central to the decision making process and crucial to generate value for business but that's that's also where uh, things might get complicated uh, developing a data strategy integrating siloed departmental data into a unified data platform sourcing and validating external and structured data uh, use it to train uh, ai model uh, these are all challenges that need to be addressed to maximize the ai potential and we can't ignore one of the key questions what about the human element Many manufacturing employees are concerned that AI might negatively affect their jobs. How can leaders build a culture that promotes human AI collaboration? When introducing AI into an organization, the human factor is crucial and must not be overlooked. Human oversight is essential. It's people who curate, validates and provide the high quality data that enables this system to perform reliably and responsibly. Equally important is addressing the impact on workforce. AI may raise concerns about employees, especially those with operational role who might fear to lose their job. To address these concerns, business leaders must implement robust change management strategies to position AI not as a replacement, but as a tool that enhances and power in the individual. We firmly believe that to unlock the full potential, AI should not be seen as a tool for automation, rather as one for augmentation. AI should not be designed to replace, but to complement, empower people to seize new business opportunities. Carmelo, I like your perspective on human oversight. Looking at advanced deployments of AI now, how are autonomous systems, agentic AI, transforming day-to-day -day manufacturing operations? Agentic AI is changing manufacturing by going far beyond traditional automation. These systems do not just follow scripts. They understand business goals, break them down into tasks, execute them across different software and tools to reach a business goal. For example, an AI agent for inventory can analyze sales trends, uh, forecast demands, uh, analyze supplier lead times and place a replenishment order with the, all without needing any human inputs. The real uh, shift is from producing an outcome like a report, a prediction, to reaching a business results, a business outcome. Now, manufacturers are clearly focused on both sustainability and AI advancement. How can these technologies help companies achieve their environmental goals while still driving efficiencies? When it comes to sustainability, uh, it's important to acknowledge that AI at least in its current form, is not designed to reduce environmental impacts or CO2 emission. Companies like Microsoft, Meta, Google are, uh, have consumed a vast amount of energy to train their AI models. However, the real value in sustainability comes when AI is used to optimize energy consumption and reduce waste, which can contribute to reduce environmental footprint. Uh, on a broader level, AI can be used to improve the quality of life. AI can help create new skilled job by creating the demand for new tasks and new expertise. The issue uh, is always about uh, using innovation and AI for society. Thank you, Carmelo, and thanks to, to Satish, Stefan and Mark Oliver. I do hope you've enjoyed this exploration of AI's role in transforming industrial manufacturing. Join us next time for another deep dive into the way AI is reshaping business as we know it. Bye for now.